What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Fantasy Files podcast, where we talk about our favorite fantasy series and topics. We are your co-hosts, Spencer and Gabe, and we are talking about Empire of the Vampire today because uh, two days ago, or like maybe three days ago prior to this recording, Empire of the Damned has just released. And so we will be uh, reading that this next week and doing an episode uh, with our friend Sam for that next Sunday. Uh, And you guys will probably see that video like the next Tuesday after this comes out or whatever. So yeah, we're we're really excited for that, and I'm really excited to talk about this book because it's one that I've been trying to get Gabe to read for so long, yep. and I finally uh, forced his hand by being like, we're doing an episode on yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. He laid down the law. I was like, all right, dude. I'm, I'm glad he did, though. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, and we're recording on StreamYard. I'm sure you can notice that our layout is a little bit different. Uh, I like that it does this layout for me, so I don't have to do this in Premiere after the fact. It just like gives you guys a cool background. It gives like our name down here somewhere, and uh, I don't really have to do much, which makes my job a lot easier. So hopefully it sounds good. Hopefully, um, you know, when I download these recordings after the fact it all works well in premiere and everything uh but we're gonna try it out for at least a month and and see how it goes um also something gabe and i were talking about doing uh after this episode is giving our patrons some some other kind of content some other incentive to uh you know pay for the patreon to subscribe on patreon And I think what we're going to do is for the $6 tier and above, all of these episodes, we're going to run them live over to Patreon so you can watch as we record. And even after we're done recording, you can still watch them. Yeah, Yeah, and and they will be unedited. They will be the raw footage. So there will be crazy shit that goes on behind the scenes. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) You'll you'll see all the uh, you know all the mistakes and all the like bathroom breaks and stuff, and and we have little things that we can put up in place of us when we when we take a break and whatnot. But um, but yeah, I I think that's a good incentive for people to join our Patreon is you getting all of these episodes as soon as they come out, like literally as they are being recorded. Uh, I don't know how you get much better than that. Yeah. So if you'd like to join our Patreon, that would be great. <clears throat> for uh, $3 and above, you get exclusive content. That's our After Dark episodes where we basically just goof around and we talk about all sorts of uh, different topics and just kind of talk crap and whatever. It's just us being us. Uh, and then for $6 and above, you get these episodes as they're being recorded and way earlier, like literally like a month earlier than everybody else. So. Um, You can also reach out to us on Twitter and Discord, which are both linked in the description of this episode here on YouTube. Uh, So if you'd like to chat with us or request uh, a book for us to read or anything like that, you can reach out to us that way. Or you can just leave a comment here on YouTube. We always appreciate chatting with you guys down in the comment section. And other than that, the best, the other best way to uh, support the channel is just by subscribing and liking the video. And we appreciate every single person yes. that does that. Uh, we're almost to 900 subscribers at the time of the recording, which is only 100 away from being monetized. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my god. Crazy. So yeah, thank you to all the people that have, uh, that have subscribed recently. You guys are all absolutely fantastic. That's awesome. All of the housekeeping that I have, I think, so we're going to go into, we're going to talk about Empire of the Vampire, but usually we start the episodes with what have we been reading, and I've been focused on this, and then prior to this I was reading, uh, yeah, I think I think before Empire of the Vampire it was just Ghost Story. It was just the mm. Dresden Files book that we did uh, and the Parker books. So I think that's all I've been reading. Have you been checking out anything else? Yeah, so I don't I don't know if I – if I, I think I was reading this before the last uh, podcast as well, but I can't remember if I mentioned it or not. But um, uh, Wool by Hugh Howie. Mm. 
Yeah. And also Shift. I read both those. Yeah. And I Would really you... liked it. I, oh, cool. I really, I really liked them. I definitely liked the first one a lot more than the second. But yeah. the second was, was good, you know? Yeah. It's kind of a different take on what's going on. But yeah. are there, are there, there got to be more, right? There's, there's one more called Dust. And okay. that's, that's the ending. And I, right. I haven't bought it yet, but I want to. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'll definitely be on board uh, for that when we read it. But okay. Yeah. Other than that, just podcast stuff, really, I think. Cool. I can't wait for you to watch the uh, the Apple TV show yeah. for that that first book. It is so good. It is like you all know me. I'm the guy that talks so much crap about these adaptations that come yeah. out. This one is actually good. Like it's nice. legitimately amazing. So um, hope everybody checks that out. Uh, speaking of TV shows, Gabe, I have something to tell you. Okay, let's hear it. Guess what I've been watching? Oh, it's got to be something good that I like, right? Maybe? Mm -hmm. yeah. What is it? I bought myself a Netflix subscription. Okay. And I rewatched the entirety of Sex Education. Oh! Yeah! Awesome, yeah. I, am, I am right at the end of the third season. Oh, and man, I'm, I'm about to awesome, start dude. the fourth. Oh, I'm and so dude, excited for you to start Just it. like... How, how the fuck is this show so good, dude? Like, any time... Yeah, it hits every button, man. Oh my god, any time that I get, like, some distance from the show... And you come back and you're like, why have I been not wrapped in this warm blanket yes! of sex education? Oh my god, yeah. it's so, it's so good, dude. And, like... Yeah, I, I get some distance from the show, and I forget why I yep. enjoyed it so much. Uh, not that I don't like know that I love the show or whatever. Yeah, but no, I, just, I get it. You know, yeah. you you get some distance, and you yep. kind of move on to other things and whatnot. Uh, but coming back, I'm just like, dude, the way that they use music in this show, it just like hits you in the feels yep. at all the right emotional moments and all of the all of the mm. actors and actresses are just outstanding oh they're so good dude it's how are they so good yeah it's amazing i i just got to the part uh no spoilers but i got to the part in season three where our two favorite characters mm -hmm. have kind of you know gotten together okay All and right. i'm just right. like ah yep. i just i love it i love it yep. so much um so any anybody who hasn't seen sex education i highly recommend it yeah i'd be lying if i said that i wasn't terrified going into the fourth season just because i'm like please don't hurt my baby i know but, i know i was i yeah. was scared but let me tell you it's uh it's it's really good man it's, oh man it just continues the legacy perfectly awesome yeah oh i'm so glad i'm yeah. so glad so i'm excited i think i have like one or two more episodes in season three and then i'm nice. in season four awesome. and i'm just like i don't want it to be over like <laughs> that's awesome uh so yeah i'm i'm super 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 excited for that you know what i've um, been watching lately Ooh, that what is also on netflix and also really freaking good is the new netflix avatar special Oh, okay. So it's it's like a it's like a fully budgeted. Do you ever watch Avatar the cartoon? Yeah, like the, a little bit. the Last Airbender. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're not into that, then you probably won't like this. But imagine like a fully budgeted, well CGI paid for Avatar. It's fucking incredible. Yeah. Yeah. You you know what I love about you is that you are not like on the internet so you don't hear all of the other like awful things people are saying about yeah, it you're yeah you're just able to shit, like dude. enjoy it like yeah, i'm just loving it it's good i don't care what anybody <laughs> else says dude i'm sure yeah. there's always people that are like oh it's fucking something sucks like, i don't care dude it's fucking avatar bro i watched yeah i loved i watched avatar so many times as a young man i'm like i don't even care if it's bad but it's good like yeah it. You, you know that is that is one of the um like, would you call that an anime, the original show? Yeah, yes and no. I would, yeah, yes and no. Yes and yeah. no. I would say, like, in the, the hints of, like, long term, it's probably an anime, but technically it was a cartoon, you know, like, mm. you know, Sunday morning cartoon. But the story plays like an anime where it's, you know, continues. It's not just SpongeBob where every right. day is something else, you know, different shit, right? Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's cool. I, that's something that I've been I've been wanting to watch. Uh, it's the same kind of thing like with uh, Harry Potter, where I was like, ah, am I too old for it or whatever? Yeah. But our friend Mike from Mike's Book Reviews, he just recently started watching it and he's loving it. Like the cartoon, the cartoon, yeah, the animated. Yeah, the cartoon's awesome, yeah. Yeah, and so I'm like, maybe it I'm not really too good, old man. for it. Like, maybe yeah, I no, should just I, watch I would, it. I don't think you are, man. If you can get past the the thought of it being a cartoon, it's totally, totally an anime, you know? Like, I, I watch it in the same reverence as I do, like, SAO. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. And speaking of which, we have got to watch, I mean, I've already seen it, but we've got to watch that new SAO movie. Yes. It's on Crunchyroll. It sure. we got to I really want to go through and rewatch all of Alice's Asian, like, really bad. You should start from the beginning, though, like from season one. Yeah, and do it all. Thing <laughs> is, is that I've I've seen I've seen from the beginning of you know the actual like Sao before Alicization, like probably fifteen twenty times. Yeah, like I, but but when I was when I was doing my I know rewatch, it's good. I'm not saying it's not good. Like I know it's no, awesome I know. And I know I would love it. Yeah, but at the same time, like Alicization, like when I think back, I can't remember parts what happened. But with normal Sao, I know exactly what happened. I don't know, because when I when I did my rewatch, I was like talking about specific moments, and you're like, yeah. uh, I don't know. Hmm. You you might I don't know. I, it's <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot to ask though. Like it's a lot of episodes. It's a lot of uh, like seasons, I guess, because each season is basically two seasons. Yeah. And so it's it's a lot to ask somebody to watch. But um, if you wanted to do a rewatch, like I, I would do a full rewatch. <laughs> I'd do a rewatch with you, totally. Yeah. yeah, I just was thinking like more of me, you know, after after work right. in my free time, I'd probably watch Alicization. But I'd be down. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of what else, uh, what else I've been doing recently. Um, like any like video games or anything. You and I started playing oh, Borderlands played, Three uh, again, and I also played Banishers yes talk about that so yeah. you you were liking this game and i i texted you saying i didn't think you specifically would like it although yeah. i thought it looked like a good game but it sounds like you really like it yeah no i i, I really i really enjoyed it so far it's it's kind of like i definitely put it in the same category as like kind of it's got a witcher vibes for sure mm. but it's also like you know there's this there's a large map but at the same time, like you, it's kind of an enclosed space, so you only have certain ways you can go. It's not, it's not like open world, uh, right? But the thing about it that is super good versus just the like getting resources to make your sword better is the story. The story is fucking incredible, dude. Hmm. It's like, it's like really good. It's kind of a, I don't know if I do it any justice, but it's got, it's there's, you know, the whole thing is based on like ghosts, kind of spirits, yeah. and there's these banishers, which are people that go and banish spirits that have been harming people or have been you know walking on the world too long or whatever and there's this whole uh kind of the big bad is the super bad evil spirit that's super powerful and that's your mission is to try and get this spirit to leave this town of new new hope i think it's called or something yeah. along those lines but yeah dude i've just i really enjoyed it it's got a lot of that the voice acting is astounding oh, astounding cool. yeah it's really good so i that think you'd like it yeah. I've liked it. I'm like 11 hours in, I think, right now. Oh, cool. So I'm like just about halfway done, I think. Nice. But, that yeah. that's awesome. I I'm really I'm really glad that you like it because it was a it was a game that I, I haven't bought it yet, but it was a game yeah. that I looked at knowing that I would I would probably yeah. like it very yeah. much. I think you'd like it. The combat combat's cool too. Yeah. It's it's a I would say maybe a little copy and paste, but it's sure. still fun. It's like yeah. it's fun. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. I'm I'm glad, I'm glad that uh that you're enjoying it. I I think I was skeptical because you usually play games for the yeah no it's it's like not the, my normal it's yeah. not my normal thing for sure. But I'm glad that I bought it because I think it's like right it's exactly what I needed at the time, you know. Yeah. Um. So it was good to good to know that I still had it in me to play a game like that. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Do you is it like a chill game where you just kind of like lay back and play it or um. No, I would probably say not. It's a little. It's it's kind of hard. The combat okay. is difficult. It's a little stressful. But then the okay. story, the story at times like always has me like, okay, what's gonna happen here? You know, right? A lot okay. of that going on. So I wouldn't say it's chill. Okay, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, 
yeah, I, ha I haven't really been playing anything besides Hell Divers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've I've, been. I've been getting texts from you all the time. You're like, dude, you gotta. Are we diving or what? I'm like, I'm yeah, sorry, I can't. I know. I can't do it right now. I know. I've wanted to dive with you so bad. I've I've been playing a lot of it this past week, and um, man, I've gotten into some situations that you just feel like you're in a movie. Yeah, and like when you're when you're fighting the robots. There's these big ones called hulks. Yeah. And they have like a little orange thing on their back. Yeah, gotta, it's like you the gotta only get way the you can kill them. them. Yep. And so, dude, I've been on teams where like I have the recoilless rifle, which is like yes. a rocket He's launcher. Fucking awesome, dude. Did your and teammate ever have the backpack for you? Do the quick reload? I, I usually just have the backpack on. Have you have you ever had somebody wear the backpack for you though? Is what, is uh -huh. what I was asking. No. Dude, no. It's a game changer. Really? Imagine being able to shoot that recoilless rifle a shot over per second and over. Oh, until the sick. ammo's gone. Oh, Just that's like, cool. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, it's really cool. That's great. When yeah, we play I got, it, I'll, I I'll be your backpack. I'll be your okay. backpack guy. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, it's so much fun because, you know, this huge battle is going on and people are screaming at me in my headset. Spencer, get the Hulk! Get the Hulk! <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, run that way so I see it's back. And they're like, running, like looping it around <laughs> to like turn it around yep, so that I yep. can get to it. And then like they're about to die, and I hit the orange thing, and, and they just go, yeah. "Oh, dude, it so is cool. the best feeling in the world." Um, so yeah, that's that's been a ton of fun. I've been having a lot of dude, fun with that game. That's a game that literally took the world by storm yeah it's, for real it's, that game is going down in history like there's oh, no yeah. doubt about it it's gonna be oh, one yeah. of the best games ever made yeah a and they they just uploaded a new like battle pass like yeah season yeah pass. you told me that yep and, i haven't even uh, been able to check that out yet i'm bummed oh dang yeah the uh, it's really good like the first the first gun you get in the battle pass mm -hmm. is like what everybody's using right now like it's oh, so good what kind of gun is it is it like a assault rifle it's, or shotgun it's like an energy assault rifle oh okay. and it it doesn't have ammo it just oh, like it just overheats yeah so you don't have to worry about picking up ammo right oh my yeah ah dude okay. it's so good it's, so, it's, bro. I have it's so probably gonna get nerfed right now, but dude. it's so like, good i've got like 140 medals yeah ready to spend <laughs> yeah you're gonna love it you're gonna love it that's cool um, all right, so let's let's hop yeah. into Empire of the Vampire. Uh, we we were kind of thinking that this would be a a shorter episode just because, like, we didn't really plan on talking about this initially, but we were planning on talking about Empire of the Damned. But then we both read it. I I had read it before, but Gabe read it for the first time, and it was like I'm really liking this. And I'm like, maybe we just do a quick video on it to yeah. uh to chat about it a little bit. Uh, we're gonna spoil it, so full spoilers yeah, from here on out. So three, two, one. You've been warned. Um. So yeah, I I just wanted to talk about this a little bit because I reread it this past week, and I'm just like, man, this book is so good. I like the first time i read it i think i had a similar reaction to you where the first like couple hours i was like eh, it's fine and then at a certain point uh like i i think it's around the time that you see gabe as like an older his older yeah, version for me it was when he got to the you know the basically his the school i don't want to call it school what what's the name of that place it starts with an s uh i don't know it's okay, like a monastery right. yeah it's like a monastery for you know holy warriors basically but yeah. when he got there i was like okay i can i like this i can get up bark. yeah so yeah let's let's hear let's hear your thoughts having it you know w with it being your first yeah. time through uh like what were like some of your favorite things about it what were some of your least favorite things about it yeah so so again this is another book that i I attempted to read maybe a year, year and a half ago, because um, you had first read it. It was shortly mm -hmm. after you first read it, and you're like, "You got to try this good book." Right. I started it, but I never got far enough, you know, to get to the point where it grabbed me. Right. And so this time, I knew I was like, "Okay, you just got to get through the, get through what you can't really enjoy, I guess." Yeah. Um, and get to the point where you can, and I did that, uh, and I was like, I was really just amazed by how much I've enjoyed the story. Mind you, yeah. it's one of those books. I think 
I'll definitely have to reread it because hmm. I think the POV sh- or the timeline switching is what yeah. kind of you know switched me up a little bit because um, yeah. I would like I'd be so you know enjoying his you know past timeline where they're they find D- Dior. Yeah. Ooh. Or no. Yeah. Well, his thirteen-year-old self is no, where not it... not the thirteen. Yeah, I I'm talking about like past that. Like once after the monastery, after he gets done oh, with that. So yeah, when he's when he's in his thirties, he meets Dior and meets back up with Chloe yeah. and all that. But then at the same time, he's also kind of held captive by you know in the in the now timeline. Yeah. So, so then just... in his forties, he's held yeah, captive. Yeah. By and the... so it was just kind of hard to to follow and yeah. And I know that if I reread it, I'll get it. Um. Yeah, but all the all the story and the idea of you know vampires kind of taking over and the what do they call the the sun sunless or the basically silver the plague. Sake? No, the oh the thing that they're trying to get the um God, what's it called, dude? I just fucking finished the wretched it. or no, it's the it's the plague. Like they're trying to get the sun back. Sun. Oh, been day's gone. death. Day's death. Yeah. yeah. So day's death is the mission, right? That's what. Yeah. That's what they've been trying to you know get gone basically they're trying to eradicate it yeah get it out of here um so yeah it's been a little bit of a roller coaster but yeah uh, especially like the ending again i i really need to read it again because there's some parts that are fuzzy that i really wish they weren't because i'm like i know that it was so good um but ultimately ultimately from what i recall and you know it was just a fucking cool story dude i love vampires yeah i love the way also that he writes is so good it's so Mm. in-depth and just so fucking it makes dude yeah like there are some scenes where i'm like oh my god my heart is fluttering right now yeah like holy crap it's just on the edge of your seat yeah exactly yeah yeah i i i love the way that he writes i think he does such a good balance of um you know, having humor on one hand, like a very dry, like grim, dark type mm-hmm. humor, and then also just very good, like drama and action and Seriousness. intrigue. Yeah, it's so good. And uh, and his swearing in this book is yeah. so <laughs> Dude, much fun. It reminds I, me so much of yep. like Lies of Locke Lamora yeah. or like Gentleman Bastards. There's or... one part that I remember like vividly that I just about the swearing that's going to stick with me forever i guarantee it <laughs> do, do you remember yeah, what so, it was yeah so it was it was when uh so it was it was gabe and chloe and i think dior something happened but gabe said fuck chloe said my and then dior yes. said face yes fuck oh, my dude. face and i was like dude so <laughs> such so a great so such awesome. a great and I, I love i love when he's talking to uh to jean in the yeah in the present timeline and he's he like gives him crap about something he gives gabriel crap about something yep. and gabe is like uh oh allow me to search my pockets for all the fucks i give <laughs> like <laughs> yeah I, awesome. love, yep. I love that so much um and there, there's just so there's just so many other quotes like I wish I had it, here's the thing like I was not taking notes while I was listening because yeah. I wasn't expecting to do a video yeah. on this so I didn't write as many of them down but I do have a few of them here yeah um and there, there's just certain quotes where it's like yes that is how I feel inside like that yeah. like that like a book has not connected to me in this specific way before yeah um, and there's a there's a quote that's like there's no misery so deep as one you face by yourself, mm. no nights darker than ones you spend alone. But you can learn to live with any weight. Your scars grow thick enough, and they become armor. Mm. And then there's another wow. one that's uh, your past is stone, but your future is clay, yes, and you decide the shape of the life you'll make. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, so good, dude. So, good. so amazing. Yeah. Um, and so he just he has such a good way with words and i loved just his prose like i i hold uh patrick rothfuss in very high regard as far as his prose like his yeah. his writing and the way that he's able to weave a sentence together mm-hmm. uh same with scott lynch who did the gentleman bastards and i think after this book jay Kristoff is is right up there there was so many moments where I'm like, oh my god, this like speaks to my soul. Yeah. Like, holy shit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I I loved all of that. 
I was curious, um, and I'm not I'm not trying to dog on you or anything. Yeah. I'm, I'm just honestly curious. So I've noticed that when we've done books that have like multiple timelines or a framing narrative, uh, you you typically have um, an issue with that at some point. There's yeah. usually some kind of confusion and stuff. Yep. And I'm just curious, like, I'm curious why or like at what point, because a lot of other people have the same problem, but I'm just curious, yeah. like for you, why, why is that uh, a, a difficulty? Yeah, so... I, uh, I wish I knew, <laughs> you know, pretty much. Yeah. I guess, I guess like, I think that it's, I don't know. It's, it's tough to really say. Cause I, again, I wish I wasn't this way, but that is absolutely truth. I do struggle with it a lot and following, you know, I, I think it's just keeping in mind these different things while reading. Cause I think I'm, I get so invested that I just like, I want that, you know, or I guess maybe I'm you used want it to. streamlined streamlined like I yeah. just want to follow a story that goes through because that's what I'm I can hook into right but then when, right. when the story stops and I unhook right yeah and then this other story starts and I gotta work my way into it you know yeah um I wish I wasn't that way but it's definitely that's you're absolutely right I struggle with that a lot yeah that's that's very fair I think yeah. a lot of people um with with books like this or i've even seen it with like king killer or uh lies of lock lamora is a yeah. big one where yeah. people are like i just can't get past the switching like it just it does something yeah in and my i head. feel like i think i did okay with did it was i feel like i yeah. took down lies of lock lamora i really i just think it's got to be a way that a way that it's done or like a you know pros that's taken that is just kind of difficult to catch on to Right. Um, but that's why I like even in my head, I knew I was like, if I read this a second time, I'll have yeah. it down, you know, like for I'll, sure. It's just one of those things. Yeah, I, I think a reread would definitely help a lot. And, and I will reread I, it. Absolutely. Because yeah. I, I know on when I did because this is my second time reading it. Yeah. And this time through, I caught a lot more stuff than yeah. I did the first totally. time. Um, so I think that that's definitely, definitely beneficial. Um, I think that this is a particularly hard one as well because – and this is something that I really enjoyed. Like I love this about this book because I hadn't seen anything like it before. Mm. Um, you know, we see – if you look at King Killer, we have a frame narrative with that where they're in this tavern that Coat owns. And then he tells his story of when he was Quoth. Yeah. And – the only time that you go back to the tavern is like these inner like yes. interlude chapters yes. in between yes. other ones very so, very defined yes yeah. exactly and so you you always know that you're going yes. back to the tavern yeah. in this one it was extremely free flowing yeah it just all where... of a sudden you know it, his he stops talking and then he starts again but he's in this other timeline or he's right. he's you know and it's like you have to sometimes should it take me you know 30 words to realize oh this is not where he was before and he's talking different why is that and then i'm like oh shit it's because he's not In telling that time. story yeah right. yeah yeah and yeah and the, and the difficult thing was too is that like let's say that he's in his 13 year old storyline mm -hmm. he's talking about that while he's telling the story him and Jean are talking in the middle yeah. of it. So Jean will make a comment on the yes, story. And they'll pop back out for a second and then pop yeah. right back in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So so that's that's really hard to keep track of, but it's really rewarding when you can like see it totally. happening. Totally. And then um and then yeah, they'll like Jean will cut in or Gabe will like stop stop his story. Yep. And he'll be like, okay, so now I'm gonna go to the thirty 32 year old storyline and like hop over there right. and so it's it's very very fluid and it's it's something that's quite difficult to uh to keep track of um so i i certainly applaud you for for getting through it all and kind of catching on and whatnot because it's it's not like out of all of the frame narratives that i've read this is definitely yeah. one of the more difficult ones for sure yeah. um but that being said, I I loved it. Like I loved I loved the framing narrative uh, for all of those reasons because yeah. it was such a fluid thing and it was difficult, but it was so like rewarding because it, it was totally. so different to anything totally. else. 
Yeah. Um, I was never like, you know, like even I would get frustrated with myself, but even at, I was like never upset with it, you know? Right. I was like, this is still awesome. And I know it is awesome. I yeah. just can't, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, something else that Jay Kristoff does within that frame narrative is he basically tells you right off the bat that Gabriel like the reason why they're in the frame narrative is that he killed the king. Like he already yeah. did the thing and they know that he, you know, lost the grail at some point. They know that he got like captured, all this stuff. And I think it really speaks to Jay Kristoff's confidence in his story that he's willing to spoil a plot point. Like he's willing to be like the biggest plot point of this book. Yeah, he's like, yeah. I'm going to tell you what happened, and then I'm yeah. going to tell you how they got there. And I have so much confidence in my ability yeah. to tell a story of how they got there that yes. you're like that you're going to care about it's that way It's not going to matter. More. Yeah. 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 Oh. It's not going to matter that you already knew. You know? Yeah. It's like, all right, I'm <laughs> still totally invested. Oh, my God. It's so good. Um, did, you, did you have a timeline that you liked more than the other one? Was there one that you liked being in? Right. So I really, I really liked the kind of the starting out the 13 year old self where he, you know, living with an abusive dad and his mom and sisters and stuff and kind of seeing that shit go downhill was cool. Um, but probably the timeline where he meets Chloe out and Chloe's got, you know, Dior uh, and they're basically, you know, Chloe's on a holy mission trying to get this yeah. person who we don't really know is the grill at this time right. to somewhere where she, he, she, she can be used because it was a he at first. Now it's a she. Yeah. <laughs> did um, that way real quick. Did that blow your mind? Yeah, it did. <laughs> totally. Yeah. The second they fell off that cliff and he's like, he's like, wait, why does she have wrappings? He's like, oh, oh. Fuck, it's a girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, but that was so that good. One. Because you you had called me at some point and it was like right before that was about to happen <laughs> yeah. and you were yeah. still referring to Dior as a <laughs> yeah. guy and you're just and I, I was like, just oh. like I was like, like uh-huh, okay, yeah, it is uh-huh, yeah sure, uh-huh. sure, sure. <laughs> sure it's definitely a guy yeah that one and then yeah that's that's probably my favorite timeline I would think yeah uh, that whole yeah. journey until until the end obviously but yeah. I, I'm I'm hoping that you know the second book will get more of like where he's at right now. I'm assuming that's probably what'll happen. Yeah, because from what I understand, he's you know he's done the the big thing and he's kind of held captive by John, right? Yeah. Or John, and so yeah. he's just kind of there telling this historian John the story of how this happened. So like I'm hoping like he either gets out, escapes, or you know something along those lines takes place. Yeah, but and, we'll and we even. We even see at the end of the book, and, yeah, and there was he, uh, yes, he like okay. tried. So I, yeah, you'll have to. I, I was like, I didn't absorb it, but I okay. remember listening to it because I remember rats and some other stuff. So you have to tell me kind of how that went down because I want to know. I was gonna re-listen to it, but I was like, we gotta start this. So right, yeah, that's <laughs> that's another thing. So we didn't talk about this at the top, but can you please tell everybody what you just told me? Where like, so today. To, you, you woke up and you were like, hey, I still got a few hours left. I got to listen to more it. More than a few, dude. I, yeah. th- I had way more than I fucking thought you did. Thought, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like six it's hours. So, I thought I had two. And so today you're like, you're like, I'm just going to like put my headphones in and do <laughs> stuff around the house. And before we hit record, you told me this huge list of stuff that you did today while you listened. Can you please talk about that? I will <laughs> happily so tell the people about that. So. <laughs> So I knew that, you know, like I had to listen to this without stopping. Mind yeah. you, six hours, right? Yeah. Continuously oh, listening to this, hard to do, right? And so Oof. what I, in my head, I thought, I was like, all right, I have to be away from other people. So I have to right. be away from my fiance, to be away from the dog. I need to be outside. That's the way. Okay. <laughs> Luckily, it was a beautiful outside? day. Beautiful day. Gorgeous. <laughs> what can I do outside? And I was like, all right, I'm just going to start washing cars. I wash my car wash Leah's car, and I wash my mom's car, the only three cars in the driveway. <laughs> There's one more I didn't wash. And I was like, all right, I still got four hours and 20 minutes left. What can I do? All right, time to mow the lawn. <laughs> Jumped on the lawnmower. Mow- my parents have five acres, and I- I'm currently living in their downstairs. Five acres. That's a lot of lawn. I was like, all right, let's do it. Mowed the lawn, edged the front lawn. I was like, all right, I still have two hours and 10 minutes. I got to keep going. 
mowed the back lawn, edged the back lawn. And I was like, all right, I got like 30 minutes. Now I can go shower and finish this off. Oh, that's so yeah. funny. And then I texted Spencer and I was like, dude, I'm going to be honest. Like, I'm so fucking tired. Dude. Like, <laughs> just I, from... like, this is more more work than I do. Because when I'm at work, man, like I'm just in one spot, bro. Like right. I'm not doing much. I was pushing lawnmower yeah. all day, holding a weed eater. Like I'm fucking tired. <laughs> You got like you got worn out from like listening to a book essentially because you had to do all this yeah, other stuff yeah, in order exactly. to listen to it. Because dude, every time I went uh, inside to get water, it was like I was like, what did you say? You know, I have to pull right. off my headphones, and I'm like, this right. is biting into my time here. I need to yeah. go back outside. I'll get my water and leave. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so great. I really. Yeah. Oh man, I really really applaud your commitment. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Man, that's so freaking funny. Um, <laughs> but yeah, at the end there, so um, if you didn't quite catch it, basically he, they were like wrapping up their conversation yep. and John is like, okay, well, I'll come back tomorrow and we'll get the rest of the story, which will yeah. presumably be the next book. Yep. And, um, and before John leaves, Gabriel asks him, can I just have like one more hit of Sanctus? Yeah. And John's like, I guess, all right, you earned it. And so he calls his thrall in. Yes, yeah. And she like brings the Sanctus and John grabs it. And he goes to hand it to Gabe. And Gabe grabs his wrist and like pulls him in and like starts yeah. to like try to like take him down. Yep, yep. But John is like super quick and he turns into a like a pack of rats rats yeah okay. yeah and okay. and he was like one of them and so his thrall just like grabbed the rat and then and closed ran. the door yeah okay and then and then he's like well it was worth a try worth yeah a it shot, was worth a try yeah. yeah okay you can't right, blame cool. me for trying yeah i can't blame me for trying exactly all right uh um but yeah i uh so what what were we talking about before that because the you, um, you asked me my favorite kind of like timeline. timelines yeah yes yeah. So I, I want to talk about the Sanctus, but also I think my, like, it's like just barely the 32 year old timeline. Like I, mm -hmm. I was so close on each one. And I think yeah. that was the really cool thing about this book is that normally when I'm reading a book and I'm really into one POV and it changes, I'm usually like, damn it. Like I Bummed wanted out. to hear yeah, the rest like of the to, yeah, thing. Totally. But, totally. but, Every time the timeline changed in this book, I was like eager to hear what was happening in the other timeline. Yeah. I was like, I, it's not like bumming me out in any way. Yeah. Um, and so I, I liked both of them. I definitely, um, if we're looking at the early parts of both timelines, I liked the early part of the 32 year old timeline more because mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the beginning was kind of slow and that's the timeline we start in the 13 year old yep. timeline. Um, but I think once both of them got rolling, they were damn near equal for me. Like I, I enjoyed them so much. Like I enjoyed, um, Gabe going on missions with all of the other silver yeah. saints in training yep. and them going out to that town where yes, there was where, like uh... a, there was like a boy that had been feeding on yep. this guy's wife and her son and had like basically was like trying to turn both of them yeah. and I just I loved all of that stuff because Gabriel is like stumbling around trying to figure out the silver saint thing and then occasionally he gets really lucky and yeah. is able to like kill one of them in a really awesome way and everybody's yep. like oh holy like, shit and like wow. yeah <laughs> he's something he's something yeah so i i really like that i i hope i hope in the next book we at least because i would say like three quarters of the way through this book the younger timeline just ended and from there it was all the older timeline yeah. um because it, it got to the point where like gabriel and um what's her name uh gabriel Lily and Dior. no uh astrid oh, Sash astrid, astrid. Okay, yeah that's his wife yeah it, it was where it was where gabriel and astrid got like kicked out of the monastery yeah and from then on out it was just the 32 year old timeline and so i'm hoping because 
earlier in the book it said yeah gabriel became like the best silver silver saint while he was at the monastery and he was feared across the land because yeah. he just like conquered and like all of these major battles and just kicked so much ass yep and it's like i want to see that so i hope that in the next book we get one timeline that is him kind of like doing all of these great things that people know him for because when we first get into the 32 year old timeline he goes into a town and people are like holy shit that's gabriel de leon like they yeah. know who he is and yep. so i want to see him like make that name for himself the black line yeah dude so yeah i i i liked both of them i i feel like i really enjoyed uh enjoyed both of the timelines i do want to talk about sanctus and yeah so i was gonna i was just gonna i'm gonna interject okay because there are two two points in this book that were so intensely descriptive enough to make me actually like feel something pretty intense i guess yeah. the first one is when he's talking about sanctus yeah and he's loading it up you know doing his thing he's like you don't want to burn it you want it to vaporize all right. Okay. That's, yep. you know, yeah. <laughs> relatable. Know. Yeah. yeah. Relatable. <laughs> Me and Spencer met in a rehab. We were yeah. both junkies at some point in the past. We've been clean for a long time. Uh, and so it like hit me like, Oh my God, I haven't thought about that in so long, dude. You know? Right. Yeah. Um, and so that was kind of, you know, I guess cool, but also kind of not cool. <laughs> um, and then the next one is the freaking sexual scenes in this book, dude, blew dude. me away. Yes. Like I, it's just unreal. My fiance reads a lot of that smut shit, you know, fantasy <laughs> smut. You does know, she really? Of, yeah. Fuck that's yeah, so dude. funny. <laughs> like most women do, I would think. Oh, that's great. And so I'm like, I'm like, I could, if I put this in her ear, it'd be right up her alley. You know what I'm saying? Did you show was, her like a scene? You should, no, you should I, show I, her one I of the scenes. No, I didn't show her, but I will. I totally will. Yeah. But I was like, even then I was like, my heart's beating fast. Like, I'm like, holy crap, dude, this is pretty, this, this is like is pretty intense, dude. <laughs> kind of <laughs> like, hot. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, that's my two things. But now let's talk about Sanctus. Yeah, well, first, since we're talking about the sex scenes, yeah. um, there's like, know, I think there was like three, and one of them yeah. was like, just like, oh my god. Yeah, one of them was like extremely raunchy. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's it's funny. Uh, so, Mike from Mike's Book Reviews is the person that initially sold me on this book um, because I, I saw the cover and I'm like, eh, it's like this shirtless guy. Is this some kind of romance or whatever? I like the cover. I think the cover's cool. I, it makes I me like, think of a badass sword vampire. Yeah, like I, I like the cover now. Yeah. But at the time, but at first you're like, oh, I don't need a shirtless guy with muscles. We don't need Right. That. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Mike from mike's book reviews was the one that told everybody just forget about the cover yeah, like it's, it. it's not just like that at all yeah. yeah and so he was also the one in his review where he was like he's like i normally don't get along well with sex scenes like i don't yeah. think they're written very well i don't think there's very many authors exactly, who have done dude. them it doesn't properly feel authentic, right it doesn't feel yeah. real yeah yeah and uh he was like empire the vampire had some scenes that had me like, yeah. oh my god, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and he uh, he interviewed Jay Kristoff, and Kristoff oh, cool. was saying that he basically he wanted to he. So he, this is the guy that wrote Nevernight. Do you remember yeah. that book? Yeah, I do. Yeah, a while a while back. Yeah, yeah. It was like one of the first things yep. that we had read, and. Um, he's jay kristoff said that he felt like the sex scenes in that book were not up to par like they're yeah. not like where he wanted them to be at least and so he asked his wife for just like a ton of her favorite smut, smut books yeah and he just spent like months reading these smut books and like practicing mm. his sex scene writing dude and that's crazy here we are <laughs> yeah lee is reading a it's the probably the most popular like fantasy smut it's called like a court of thorns and roses right yes yeah it's like the one right yeah and i was like all right let's see and i popped open to a book and it was like i was like holy fucking shit dude that's you know you can't even say that on youtube probably holy crap right yeah <laughs> it's unreal i'm like i don't even yeah. i don't like this this is not yeah. pleasant to me but there dude, she loves it she eats it up bro like oh all that's the time. crazy it's her favorite shit 
Oh man, is it like Fifty Shades of Grey kind of stuff? Yeah, or? that's exactly it, dude. It's like it's like a fantasy story, but there's also a lot of like really good sex and romance. Right. That's it. Okay. That's that's the ploy. Yeah. That's crazy. That's yeah. funny. Um, but yeah, I I think he did a fantastic job. I don't think he ever spent like too long on them. Like they totally. were just yeah. long and, enough and, to and make they, you go Whoo. exactly, exactly. Yeah. and it was yeah. I that's I'm glad you said that because that was one thing I was thinking. I was like, it was enough, you know. It was an, it was it felt like just a moment, and a right. lot of them were just a moment. They got you know the bell rang or something happened that stopped it. And that's yeah. what it felt like. So it was cool, not just yeah, you know, drawn out night of pleasure thing. It was just like a kind of an innocent turning, you know, right, a little more not innocent. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, so I, I think he did that really well. Uh, and then the Sanctus was something when I read this the first time, that yeah. was something that really <clears throat> got me hooked into the book. Cause like you said, yeah. we both, um, we, we both have a history with drug use and very similar drugs to very similar what drugs. Christoph yeah. is like <laughs> yeah. portraying here. Yeah. Right. Um, and so like I was able to, like identify with Gabriel totally. through so many moments yeah. where he's like, uh, like when him and Dior are in that town yes, and, and he's, he's like, like, I need Sanctus. And yeah. they go, they go to this shop and they ask him for uh, some of Dior's blood. Yeah. And he's like, that's something I'm not willing to give. Yes. And so he like comes back and he's like sick as a dog. And Dior goes out in the middle of the night and like goes and gets it. And, uh, and then like a whole bunch of events kind of happen. Like yeah. there's, there's like a hunter that comes in that's looking for them and stuff. Uh, but eventually he gets that sanctus. Like she's oh, like, I, I got just... the, I stole the files. Like they're ready to go. Yeah, the world's And back. he loaded it up and I was just like, oh dude, I know that feeling yeah. of being like without this thing that essentially sustains you. Yeah. And just there's the relief. Couple exactly there's a couple other scenes too where like because so gabriel can be sustained by sanctus or blood right, right? human yeah. blood can do the same thing that the sanctus does but there's times like where chloe i can't remember when exactly but i know he was she again, offers she offers her arm and yeah he says, get the fuck away from me i'm you know i'm i may be a bastard but i'm not a monster right and it's like i can also relate to that like you know there's there's lines right there's yeah. lines that you try not you to draw. cross, and you yeah. hope that you don't cross them, and you don't want to, and you do everything you can to not. Right. Like, that's that's cool, man. Cool that that that's was written such a in good there, point. Yeah, that's such a good point. Um. Yeah, Chloe. Chloe was like a great a great friend to him. Like I yeah. I loved I loved Chloe right up until the very end, where she like yes. completely turned the tables. Yeah. A and that that was a crazy moment. Where, um, where, Which you know, one are, okay, you got to practice for me though. When, sure. when, when the sanctum had the girl and they were going to kill her and Chloe right. was like, it's God's will. You can't, you know, yes. we need to do this. And he's like, fuck, you know, you aren't going to kill yep. the girl. Okay. All right. Yeah, exactly that. And he has to like, in order to stop this, in order yeah. to really stop this, he has to kill all of his Everybody friends. that's yeah. Yeah. Like everybody he's ever known, like Which, at let's the just let's just think about that for a second. Right? Could you imagine? Fifteen, twenty years of his life were spent with these brothers, right? You know, bonding with them and loving them and learning how to fight with them, and and they just yeah. He was like, no, this is this is not right. This is skewed. You're fucking crazy for thinking that this is what God wants. You know? Yeah. Because that's what it was. It was like yeah. this is God's will you know blah 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 and he's like no you're not gonna fucking murder and on holy ground for this shit you know right right yeah yeah it was it was crazy because you think about it like at the end of the book at the end of like the 32 year old timeline basically besides aaron and baptiste everyone he's ever known is now dead some yeah. of which by his hand yep and it's just like dude this poor guy like yeah. you One know thing he, after another with him man gabriel yeah just gets fucked at every corner it feels like it, it's just such a such a tragedy all yeah. along the way yeah and i i really feel for him because 
you know, there's there are certain things that happen where it's like, like, yeah, that's his fault. Like that's because like directly because of a decision that he yeah. made. Yeah. Um, but still it's like you don't want to see him like hurt. Like you don't want to yeah. see him like lose everybody. Totally. And I think that's something that I appreciate so much about the relationship he now has with Dior is he he now has like this person that he can't like I'll, like not in like romantic way but like he has this person that's like no, his it's, partner it's, now it's the person that that, that is going to be there for all of right it. yeah because she she is all of it she is the answer right right and that's his mission is to make sure that this stops without any holy holier than thou bullshit you know? yeah yeah and and she even asks at the end when when he saves her she's like would it have worked and he goes fuck if i know and he like yeah. sets the place on fire yes and yeah. you know what it made me think of i and like no spoilers really yeah. but it made me think of the last of us oh yeah totally because that's kind totally. of like the whole point of the last of us yes i didn't um, correlate that but you're right that's like that's in direct yeah correlation to this absolutely right yeah and so uh and so I thought that was really, I thought that was really, really interesting. Um, but yeah, what a, what a like tragic ending. And so I'm yeah. kind of wondering if he's going to go back to Aaron and Baptiste and kind of check on them. Yeah. Uh, because the, that storyline pretty much ends right there when he's like, fuck if I know, and he sets the place on yep. fire, that's, he goes back to the 40 year old style, uh, storyline timeline. Yeah. And uh, and then that's the end of the book. And so I'm really wondering if him and Dior are going to go back to the little town that Aaron and Baptiste yeah. had. That'd be um, cool. I was I was so happy to see them again. Yes. You know? I was dude. just like really excited because because the whole, you know, that the first time. Well, I think it's when he was just thir no, maybe 16 year old self in the school. Right. Is when he first caught them you know, right together. Um, right. And I was, and he's like, you know, I, cause, it, cause you're, you told me you're like him and him and Aaron, Aaron, thank you. Aaron are going to be like best friends. And I was like, well, they fucking hate each other right now. Yeah. They hate the fuck out of each other. Wasn't and that so a went, great turning around? Oh dude. Yeah. Was I was so like, good. I was just like, so, so stoked that he was just like, I'm not, I won't tell anybody like you guys are okay. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I don't care. It's not right. a big deal. And they were freaking out and stuff. And then after you know all that shit seeing seeing them again still together i was like dude that's yes awesome. that's freaking awesome dude oh uh, dude and there's even a moment i wish i could remember like what the specific scene was but yeah. there's a moment in the younger timeline where him and aaron kind of do the like 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 brotherly like they're they're fighting beside each other and yeah. they're just like taking down vampires and stuff and aaron's like you're okay and yeah, I Gabriel's think, I think like you are too. Like that oh, has to be so... at the at the ball when they catch that old the older lady vampire. That's yes. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yes. Because then, because Gabe, like you know, this 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 true high blood vampire is like taking this girl, you know, right on her shoulder, and 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 everybody's gray. Whatever his name is, the leader of the troop there was like, oh, no, gray hand, gray hand. Don't move. Don't don't do anything. We'll save so many more lives later. And Gabe's yeah. like, fuck this shit, dude. Fuck and that, he, yeah. Yeah, stops her and stuff, and then they fight, and yeah. Yeah. What a... Just, what a great character arc. Yeah, like, man. I love them so much. Like, I, yeah, I love that awesome. that's the friendship, and you know, there's... Uh, that's like one of my favorite... I don't even know if I would call it a trope, but that's like one of my favorite things in fantasy. Like, we see that in uh, King's Dark Tidings with Reskin totally. and uh, Tyrion where they like hate each other and then they become like through, essentially best friends yep, through adversity man a bond yeah. will be made it's cool it, oh man what a you, you just pulled yeah. that out of nowhere that was great <laughs> yeah it's a good one man i did pull it out of nowhere but it's true you yeah know? for sure okay so we talked about the sanctus we talked about the sex scenes yep. what did you think of the tattoos the tattoo magic kind of thing i I like the tattoo magic a lot. I was bummed out that because you know, like when he was first in the temple or whatever, you know, that was part of the 
kind of the you know coming of age thing there, right? Like you became a member, you got these tattoos, you were a holy fighter for God against these vampires. You were a half blood. That's what <clears throat> that's what made you able to do this, right? So that was super cool, and I loved it. I loved the fact that it was like God's light would blind the vampires, and like they had the wheel and all that stuff was super cool. But I was bummed out because like you know he once he lost his faith, yeah, then they were useless. You know, yeah, uh, up until up there's until the point. end, yeah, up yeah. until the end. And so I was like, I was like, it sucks that it was totally a faith thing, in the sense of that you know the tattoos could have been powered by themselves, which would have been cool, right? But also having the faith is like the thing that makes it important work, yeah, yeah, the thing that makes it work, yeah, yeah. It, it reminded me a lot of uh, the Dresden Files. Uh, especially what we find out at the end because like the whole time you're kind of thinking that like god or whatever is powering these tattoos and that him like falling away from that is what made them stop yeah but same thing like in dresden files is you know harry dresden says it's not it, it's not like the artifact or god that like repels a vampire like when somebody holds up a cross yep. it's a very 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 strong faith in something yes like a, it's just a, faith period it's yeah it's believing in something greater than yourself that could you know something yeah. other than yourself that's it really yeah, yeah exactly and having faith in a friend or having faith in something you know this might be okay right yeah and and i think that faith is such a huge faith and hope is, is such like a huge theme of this story yeah because when we see gabriel in his uh 32 year old timeline he's lost everything he doesn't believe in anything he's left it all he's behind faithless. yeah yeah he's like super cynical like yep. even seeing chloe again isn't enough to like restore his faith yeah. in people like he still kind of hates everybody um and this moment near the end of the book, well, throughout the whole book, we're told, you know, Gabriel keeps saying, like, my friends are the hill that I die on. My friends are the hill yes. I die on. Yep. He says that over and over. And at the end where, you know, he has, he essentially has the option to just leave Dior. Yeah. And yeah. he's like, it, hol he's holding them all back. And yeah. he turns to her and he says, I will never leave you. Yes. And dude. all of a sudden his tattoos like flare up. Yes. Oh dude. My God. Oh gave my me chills, God. man. Just that's that so one liner good. itself gave me so many chills because that yes. was that was her biggest fear. Yes. You know, every, everybody's left her. Everybody. Doesn't matter who you were. And he and she says that yes. after, after Gabriel finds out that she's a girl, that's the thing. You know, it's yeah. like you're gonna leave me. I know you right. are like you're gonna leave me. It's, no, I'm not, oh. no, I'm not. And when he finally not only says it but actually believes it for himself yes. that's when that's when his tattoos light up and dude, i was like dude oh my god bro it, that, it's just ugh. that that is such a good point that like like you just caught on to something that i didn't which is <clears throat> like his like him saying that like she she's so worried about this right and she believes that he is gonna leave her and him saying that to her and then his tattoos lighting up is like a confirmation to dior that he will exactly. never leave her it literally means that he <sighs> he means it with every point of his being that he is not gonna leave her it's like oh that's, my that's God. what did it yeah that's man so i was good. i was just lit up when that happened dude i was like oh my god that's so good and and his tattoos light up with a with like a crimson light rather than the silver yeah. one and not so only that, that cool. but the what's his name boss the the son of the danton Voss. yeah danton Voss. that's the guy who's chasing dior right through yeah the, through the ice when when Voss danton sees that red light he immediately first thing he says he's like kill him kill him and get me the girl yeah obviously like he's terrified of what he just saw i don't know yep. what it is we don't know what it is but he knows and he's terrified yeah yeah dude. so it's some it's some cool shit i think i think danton just knows that um that gabriel for the past few years has been easy prey because yeah. he doesn't have his faith okay and then once it that once it comes it back danton's yeah. like Oh, we're fucked. Like, <laughs> yeah, but why is why is it why is everything crimson red though? Do you would you know? Do you, I, can you know that? 
I I don't I don't know. I don't know if okay. that's something like very specific that yeah. we'll find out later. That's what or, I was probably thinking too. Yeah. Yeah. E- either that, or it's just that faith in different things has like a different color compiled. Yeah. 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 Um. But what what a but great yeah, scene! He knew and he was fucked when that happened, dude. And I oh was like, my god! Oh, I'm so glad. So good. Yeah. And like, and that whole scene on the ice where he like he like falls through it and dior like stabs him through the ice and yes. like she's like it was the only way to stop you from going down river yeah. and just like and what Ash, what a great Ash scene is just like telling him like don't you know can't uh i can't remember what she said but she's like it's okay everything's fine we're gonna handle it she's like yeah this is how we're getting you out of here this is meant to happen <laughs> yeah. like yeah dude yeah what'd you think of ash drinker dude i love i love <laughs> that sword so much man. i know like so much i i it's I such love... a cool it's such a cool piece to add to a story yes like it's it's one of those things like there's you know you can have faith and you can have power you can have vampires but when you have you know something that is very much unique there's mm-hmm. nothing else like it in the world that yeah. only affects you know the person that is holding ash drinker or touching it in any way yeah just a cool it's like man there's so much you can do with it yeah and also like just i dare anybody to tell me that's not cool like it's, it Ru- won't happen for sure for sure and and not only that but like we're so used to seeing magical swords yeah in fantasy but this is like a broken sword like this yeah. is like a sword and that has been he even damaged says, like there's a piece where he's about like yeah ash drinker has not been the same since it broke right She's right been confused and and stuff and so like i think we've only ever heard ash drinker when she was broken right yeah and and matter of fact we haven't even th- this is why i think that we're gonna yeah. get an early pov again in the second mm-hmm. book is because we haven't seen him get ash drinker like we okay haven't, yeah like we haven't totally. seen the moment where totally. he like actually found yep. ash drinker yep. um and but so the I- fact there, there was a time too where like i think it was after so after uh dior fell off you know they had to jump off the cliff being chased and it's cold water and he's trying to keep her warm trying to keep her awake and he hands he grabs her hand and puts ash drinker in her hand right yeah he's like keep keep her awake don't let yeah. her fall asleep and then chloe or uh i keep wanting to say chloe dior's like she's singing to me and he's like just listen to what she has to say right like, dude how cool is that man that's so cool yeah. that's so awesome and and like <clears throat> ash drinker was so funny there was so many moments where like oh yeah he's always awesome he's in like the heat of battle and he's like i was stabbing stomachs and cutting throats while ash drinker murmured a recipe to lentil yeah. soup like yeah. what the fuck exactly that's it dude that's it. totally covers how ash drinker talks that's exactly it she's always just singing some weird song or talking about some weird shit that has nothing to do with what's happening but it's at the same time it's like i'm so glad she is you know yeah it's awesome <laughs> It's so good. Like I would not, I would not have it any other way. Yeah, like totally. what a cool sword. Um, and not only a sword, but like a character. Like Ash Drinker yeah, is like straight it, up totally a character. Totally character. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Um, so one part I was wondering if you were gonna s- struggle with, like I did throughout mm-hmm. these books, or throughout this book. If you struggled, I probably did for sure. <laughs> what What did you think about the horses? Okay, so. I, I just, I, what I, there's one horse that he had. So maybe, he, maybe he had more. He had two throughout okay. the book. What yeah. were the names of the two? Uh, first he had, oh God. So I, I think I'm remembering the second horse. Yeah. The, because the second horse, the horse was Jezebel. Jezebel. That's the one I can and the, remember. And the first yeah. one was Justice. Justice. Okay. Yeah. So I do remember Justice being an awesome horse, but Jezebel was kind of a horse that like, you know was very out of character and how fucking awesome she was mm-hmm. you know and then the moment when they you know because dior was like you gotta name the horse better like this right you can't just be named this right yeah and the second you know dior's like that horse is so fucking like brave or something and they both yeah. were like that's it fortuna fortuna exactly yeah. dude yeah. yeah and i was like that's awesome yeah but yeah the horses are really cool man considering that you know like if if they didn't have fortuna or justice or whatever they would have been fucked oh There's yeah no way no way that they would have not been dead right yeah they would have been murdered yeah yeah 
What what did you think about the gruesome deaths they both met? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The first one, I don't know if I can remember. The, I know the, the first one, one. The first one was like the first time that we see Gabriel in his thirty two year old timeline. Okay, and he's like trying to outrun vampires, and Justice like trips on something. Yeah. And like breaks like like two of its legs okay. or something, okay. and he's like, "Fuck, this horse can't go on. I have yeah. to run. I have to leave this horse yep. here." And he has to kill the horse. Yeah. And his whole thing was like, he's like, "Dude, I've had this horse since I was like thirteen. For real, this like has been I've my had my horse since I've yeah. ever been like a man." Yeah. yeah. And then the it's... second one was even gruesomer, right? Because doesn't Dior climb out of this horse's innards? Yeah, he had to like when when they fell off it's the cliff. It's a Star Wars moment, dude. Yeah, he had to like yeah. cut it open, and they were like I, on in the snow, they were freezing. Yeah, yeah, they were freezing to death. He had to like put Dior like inside the horse yeah. and then like climb oh, in. Man. Also, but yeah, I got a dude. Yeah, a lot of respect for those horses, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like. You know, there's so many books where I'm like, they're not going to kill the dog. They're not going to kill the horse. And then in this <laughs> yeah. one, they actually do, they do. And I'm like, fuck. Yeah. So there was a there was a quote I had here somewhere. Oh, and another quote that I really liked was, uh, I've lived for 35 years with the name my mother gave me, Cold Blood. Not once have I ever seen the meek inherit anything but the table scraps of the strong. Mm. All right. And uh, that was like right at the beginning yeah. where uh, Gabriel says something prideful and um, Jean says, like, doesn't your Bible teach that the meek will inherit the earth? And Gabriel's like, fuck yep. that. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So we talked about Aaron and Baptiste. Was there any other was there any other like characters that you really enjoyed? Uh, yeah, so really I, I really enjoyed the first, you know, 13-year-old Gabriel meeting Astrid in the Forbidden Book section. Yes. That was that was really cool. I really like Astrid a lot. One thing that I need some clarification on, though, is, you know, later when he's completed his mission, you know, he sees Astrid and she tries to, like, come on to him a couple times. Yeah. Uh, how does that work? Because I didn't catch I didn't catch what was going on. Is she magic? Does she have some magic or is she uh something? What's the deal? Well what was she trying to do? So there's times like where where you know, Dior was like resting, right? And yeah. Gabriel's like, Okay, just go to sleep. I'm gonna go out. It's like I saw her out in the night and he would go out, walk through the woods, and he would see Astrid and Astrid would be like, Please let me just, you know, taste you or something. Right. Please let me just do this. Well, how was she there? Oh, see, you you remember the part where she died, right? Like her and the daughter died. So you know what's funny is that I didn't, I didn't until oh yeah until like until he said that it happened, right? Which was later, yeah, right? So this was before though that, right? Yeah. So but when, so that's how they so were it, dead, and so he's seeing just ghosts of them, right? Yeah. Okay. So it's that, it's that it's all in his head. Confused me. Yeah, it confused yeah. me a lot because I assumed they were alive, and I did see them both die. Um, oh, okay, but I think I think when I read those first two, I was like, "Why? How is she there? Like, I'm just so confused." On is she does she have some magic or something? But yeah, yeah I did see them I, die, and that fucking sucked. Yeah, I I think throughout the book you're meant to believe um, they're alive. Yeah, until you're, you see you're, the scene where they both die. Right. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. and I think that you're meant to be kind of confused as to how he is seeing Astrid. Gotcha. People, Makes sense. Yep. P people and I saw people with theories that were like, "Oh, she's a she got turned into a vampire mm. while he was away, and she's like projecting herself, and that's yeah. like her ability or whatever." That's where um, my mind was going. Not yeah. that she was a vampire, but that she found some magic or something that was right. you know letting her come to him in his you know time of need type thing. But yeah, what what a great reveal though. When uh, yeah, I forget. Is it? I think it's Aaron. That's like uh, Gabriel where is astrid and patience yeah. like yeah. where are they yeah and he's like they're at home he's like i know they're at home why are you here yeah and he's like oh i i gotta do this like i gotta kill the the main king guy he's like why go home and yeah. he's like no i gotta i gotta get my revenge and he's like revenge on what 
where are Astrid and Patience? Yeah. And that's like when he breaks down and him, he like yeah. tells him. Dude, uh, and that, that whole scene was so heartbreaking, dude. Oh, it was savage. Just holding his daughter like, oh, she's so gorgeous, dead. Oh, man. Fucking terrible. Um, yeah, I, I liked I liked Astrid a lot, uh, especially, I mean, we only really see her in like the early storyline. Yeah, yeah, um, that's where I would say I liked her the best, too. Yeah. That's where and, I noticed her anyways, yeah. Yeah, and she, uh, I don't know, she was just such like a badass little chick yeah, without she's being... Yeah, super sassy, and like, yeah. just like, but sassy without hurting your feelings, you know? Right. Like, just, she's a queen. She's yeah, she was she was still like sweet when she wanted yeah. to be and she yeah. was um she was like really badass without being like a girl boss yes. kind of thing. Yeah. Um and so I I really enjoyed that. I really liked Chloe up until the very end. Yep. I would say so too, yeah. Yeah. And also and the I, the girl and her mountain lion. You oh about yeah. For a second? Yeah, yeah. Cuz they were I don't know if I Sasha. liked them per se. Sasha, but the fact that she had this what was the mountain lion's name? Do you remember? Ooh. Like it also started with a C. Yeah, I can't remember. That's okay. There was a mountain lion. And yeah. this thing was fucking badass. Uh, I don't know. I think any any time that like anybody has a pet that's like abnormal, but just the pet is like so smart that they know, you know. Yeah, they're like, like definitely you know, more intelligent than more intelligent than your normal mountain lion would be, or or even yeah. lion. I think this one was like quite a lion, you know, yeah. it was, like a serious, serious cat. Yeah, so that was that was always super fun to see. I love when we first see her and she like walks into the bar and the cat tries to walk in behind her. And yeah. the barkeeper is like, hey, what the yeah. fuck is that? Get that out of here, dude. <laughs> and she's like, no, no, she's, she's like, trained like a house cat. Like, she's yeah, fine. Like, she's fine. And they're like, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, she's like, all right, go go walk around outside. I'll be out in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh I, I really like Dior too. I, oh, I really Dior's awesome. Yeah. I really oh. enjoyed Dior, especially after um I, yeah, I after, don't after like the, the innocence was kind of taken away because before yeah. when she was posing as a boy, yeah, she was kind of a fucking dick. Right. You know? Yeah. She was just a prick and fuck you, I don't want you to know anything about me. I understand why. It makes makes total sense. But once we got past like that shit and it came down to like what's your heart say? Yeah, she, let her walls you know, down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, let her walls down, and like Gabriel in, it was like awesome, awesome. Yeah, um, yeah, I think I think Dior is fantastic. She was definitely annoying at the beginning, but I think she was supposed to be. Yep. And uh, like later, like you said, when her walls come down, and like you learn, I, I don't think it's because you learn that she's a girl, but I think that just happens no. to be around the time where yeah. her walls start to come yep. down. Um, and so that that was a great a great part of the book and just yeah. them getting closer and closer all the way up to the end to where he's like i will never leave you yeah when she because she starts to realize because she says it from the beginning and then she sees him time and time again not leave her when she, you know she would leave or something would happen and he always came back yeah Finally was like okay maybe maybe this person isn't gonna leave yeah um another quote i'll i'll throw in here real quick because i it was said so many times throughout the book by Astrid, uh, or Gabriel says that Astrid used to say this a lot, is that uh, hearts only bruise, they never break. Mm. And I have like wrestled with this quote over the past week. And really? I'm like, is okay. that true? Like, do do hearts only bruise? And I know this is like a super deep question for the podcast, yeah. but it's like, Still, it, though, it's, it, is it just made question. me think like, yeah. Like, do do hearts only bruise? I, I, I don't would, know. Yeah, man. It's tough tough to say because everybody's different. You know, it depends on the type of person you are and the type of, you know, drive you have because you go through a heartbreak. And to some people, that is it. That's the last thing that will happen. And it's super sad. Right. But to others, it's like, this fucking hurts so bad, but I still want to – I want to be better. You know? Right, right. Just depends. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I thought I thought that was kind of a, a cool quote to have throughout the book. And then for Gabriel to be like, at one point, he's like, Astrid didn't know what the hell she was talking about. Like, yeah. And then at the very end, he's like, you know what? She's right. Like, like for him, he was yep. like, he was like, yeah, my heart is bruised, but it's not broken. Yeah. Um, And so that was really cool. 
I like to, you know, like thinking back on, we could probably both do this as an exercise, but like thinking back on like heartbreaks, right? Yeah. Like really bad ones. At the time, it's, that's it. It's, it's over, you know? Yeah. But like looking back on them now, 10 years later or whatever, no, right. I, I was bruised, but I came back, you know? Right. Like I was, right. I was, I'm better for it. Yeah. There's definitely, uh, there's definitely some like breakups and stuff that I've been, I would say like, all of the breakups that I've been through besides one were yeah. definitely like a bruise. Yeah. Uh, there, there might be one that was kind of like a break. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's definitely with time, even, even with that time. one yeah. for me. Time with... heals all wounds, man. That's how yeah. it works. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's talk about, so in this final, this final fight with Danton, uh, Gabriel is about to die and Dior and he like can't get his sword through Danton's like skin because he's such a powerful vampire and Dior does this thing because we learn that her blood is able to heal people and yep. it's also able to set vampires on fire to destroy him yeah yeah and so Gabriel is like down like Danton is on top of him he's about to die and Dior plunges Ash Drinker through Danton, and Gabriel's like, how the fuck did that happen? Dior because, coated the yes, the sword yes. in her blood. I'm like, dude, that is so fucking oh, cool. Man. Like, yeah. that is so, that is so awesome. Um, yeah, Again, what a, total, what a great Total Last of Us vibes, dude. It's like, yeah. She like, is the one. Yeah. You know? Like, it's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, I thought, I thought that was just such a, like holy shit yep. that was like just at yep. the last moment it was so yeah. good um and then uh oh you know what on the when we did our ghost story episode yeah. uh, uh jake bishop was talking about the trolley car problem and oh, and i noticed I it that. in this book where they have dior like about to be sacrificed and um and chloe is like about to do it and she's like no it's the death of one for the saving of the many yeah and i'm like oh that's like exactly the trolley car problem like yeah do you do you true. save do you save like all of humanity or do you save the one girl yeah um and so i, I thought that was kind of interesting like right after we had we had talked yep. about that yep um so then we get this fight with Greyhand, and one of my favorite things in fantasy, this has happened in so many books that we've read, where our main hero gets, like, stabbed through the chest or through yeah, the stomach through the or whatever. Yeah, they're totally, like, debilitated for the most yeah. part. Yeah. And they and they pull themselves up on the sword to and get, get closer close. and stab. Oh, oh yeah, dude. dude. That's, that's hard as fuck, man. Man. It doesn't get much harder than that. No, it doesn't. Holy like that crap. is one of my favorite, yeah. just like things that ha like action moments. scenes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Um, and uh, I love that in that moment, you know, Greyhand like spears him with his sword, and Greyhand says, "I told you not to be a hero, Gabe. Heroes die cruel deaths on the battlefield." And Gabe like pulls himself up on on the blade and he says right before he kills him he yep. says who the fuck told you i was a hero <laughs> yeah i was just like dude uh, that was so like, i'm no hero i'm a oh bastard. my god I'm no hero, dude. it's like a little bit indulgent but i yeah. love it like i oh, love dude. it so much just like this Solid. badass line it's also right another before scene where him. we get to see uh he him use his uh what yeah. do they call the blood magic the uh, something on mancy uh sanguimancy sanguimancy yeah that's another scene where he takes full advantage the first one is when i think he gets attacked in the stables right yeah I, yeah and because we even hear him say like he's like i don't know like like i've tried to like you know i can track my own blood i can do certain things but like that was something that he was not able to do consciously yeah so let's let's talk about that a little bit there's a little bit of a a trail here because he he finds out that he's part vampire, but he doesn't know who his father is. Mm -hmm. And they're like doing all these tests and they're like, Oh my God, he's like a, 
he's like a sanguimancer or whatever. Well, no, they first find out he said, you know, he's a frail blood. He's like, you don't have right, any yeah. magic. That's yeah. what they call him. And, and then, then after after he kills that that uh, high blood, yeah, you no know, gray gray hand is like okay. I think he, he gave he like over, quietly over, goes and talks. Yeah, and yeah. here's him talking about he's a sanguimancer. Should we kill him now? Right or, or what? And so he's like, oh my god, am I gonna die soon? Or you know, yeah. yeah, and it's like, who, like, who would his father be? Like, because yeah. we haven't seen anybody else besides one other character with the sanguimancy ability. Yeah. And then eventually we get to see this other vampire who's not like super bloodthirsty. Like her face is all messed up. Yeah, she's got the sanguimancy. It becomes yeah. isn't that his sister or some shit? Yeah, so that's okay. his sister. Uh, when he went back to his village, he thought his sister was the burned corpse in the yeah, chapel, but it, it was some other girl. Uh, yeah. And and this chick is like actually, yeah. His I think sister. that'll be a big big plot in the other book, right? Book two. Yeah, it's gotta be. It's gotta. I be. I mean, I would imagine because Gabriel says uh, he's like, "There's no one who's able to teach me about sanguimancy." Yeah. Like, there's and there's she even no says, other like because because she saves him from death, right? Oh yeah, and he's like, "Why the fuck would you save me with blood?" Because they, fe- you know, they gave him blood. Right. She's like, "Oh, you, you have been wasting your years. I have been studying. I have been trying. Right. You have no yes. idea what I can do." So I'm yes. like, "All right, there's some good stuff locked in there." Yeah, dude. Like, I bet it's about to get so crazy, yeah. and I would imagine that he is gonna go like train with her for a little bit just Hopefully. to like learn what he yep. can do yep um because that seems like the most and then there's logical. gotta be another big bat though you know we're gonna have to have the big bat i wonder what what or who that'll be well so i think and people can correct me if i'm wrong in the comments but the way that i understood it was that Danton Voss was like the prince, or maybe he was mm-hmm. like a lower, like royalty. Well, he, he was a Forever King's son, right? Like the his, yes. his his watchdog, the guy he right. would send out on missions. Right, and yeah. so we we learn in the in the way future timeline that Gabriel killed the Forever King, but I don't think that happened in this book. So oh. I, I I think in the next one and maybe the third one. We'll gotcha. see. Uh, okay. We'll see him take gotcha. on the actual yeah. Forever King. Um, but yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited for that because it's like, oh man, like this, this other vampire throws such yep. a huge wrench into the mix because she's yeah. not like, she's not like a kill on sight vampire. She's, yeah, she's, she's like, like control helping she's him. She's not thirsty. Yeah. yeah, she's, she's got shit figured out. Pretty crazy. So, yeah, I'm eager to see. Uh, I'm eager to see more about that. At the end of the 32-year-old timeline, we also get a moment where Gabriel, when he's when he's at the monastery, like that final battle in the monastery, he he goes to like where Baptiste had his armory, mm-hmm. and he looks at one sword that is like it says something a little bit more hopeful. And then he picks up this one that has like a reaper on it with two sides and like a yeah. skull. <laughs> and uh, I don't know exactly what this means yet, but it says, I am the door all shall open the promise. None shall break. Mm. And so awesome. I'm curious. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm wondering if that sword becomes like a famous sword later That'd be on. Cool. Or, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that that kind of uh, that kind of gets us to the end here. Mm-hmm. You know, we talked about you know Gabriel saving um, Dior, and she's like, he's like, they were trying to sacrifice you as part of a ritual, and she's yep. like, would it work? And he says, I don't care. It yeah. just burns the place down. Something I thought was cool about that whole battle is throughout the entire book in the present day. Sp- uh, timeline when he's in his 40s talking to Jean, mm. he is called the last silver saint. And mm. so, up to the very end, you're like, Well, when do the other silver saints die? Like, if yeah. he's the last one, like, what happens? And you get to the end to find out that he freaking killed him. Like, yeah. he was the one everybody, who yeah. ended the order of the silver saints, yeah. he killed all of them. And it's just like, wow, dude. Like, I was not expecting that twist. Like, I was not expecting him to be the one 
that killed everybody else because he's the last one. And then I guess technically you have Aaron and Baptiste, but they're not really like yeah. in the fight anymore. They're yep. trying to like live in this little town. Well, yeah, they, I don't think they ever even got sworn in to the order fully, right? Oh, they, they you're didn't because, right. Because that's when they found Aaron and Baptiste, you know, together as a couple. Right. And Gray Hand was like, no, they're boy lovers. They're not, you know, it's not going to happen. And Gabriel was like, well, he's one day away from being, you know, sworn in or whatever. So I don't oh, think they ever you're finally totally right. got in there. Yeah. Oh, shit. I, I totally, totally forgot about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean, that's that's pretty much all I have yeah. in my notes. Um, I'm sure I have a couple more quotes here that we could uh, that we could just kind of wrap up on. Um, there's this one that I really liked. Uh, it's in the silence we know ourselves, vampire. It's in the stillness that we hear the questions that truly matter, scratching like baby birds on the eggshells of our eyes. Like oh, that alone, wow. holy shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so descriptive. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, who am I? What do I want? What have I become? Truth is, the questions you hear in the quiet are always the most terrifying because most people never take the time to listen to their answers. Mm. They dance and they sing and they fight and they fuck and they drown, filling their gullets with piss and their lungs with smoke and their heads with shit so that they never have to learn the truth of who the fuck they are. Mm. Put a man in a room for a hundred years with a thousand books and he'll know a million truths. Put him in a room for a year with silence and he'll know himself. Himself, yes. Dude, like what a great quote. Like that speaks like so much to our modern day society where like we just like we fill our heads with I mean, even I do it. Like I tell people I always have my headphones in. Like I literally I'm I'm always either listening to a YouTube video or an audiobook or a podcast or something so that I don't have to think about too much. You don't have uh, to be alone. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um and so I just this quote, like I, I read it and I was just like, Wow, I feel like so called out like <laughs> hey I, but it's true though dude i'm the same way man i like you know if i if i'm done with something i'm like all right i'm gonna i'm tired i'm gonna go sit in the couch and relax the first thing i do is pull up you know yeah. youtube or tiktok i'm like something. all right i gotta just watch some videos right yeah but could you imagine like just like you know putting your phone in a different room and just sitting with nothing right nothing it's hard to imagine it's i i difficult. can't see myself doing it but yeah you know, I, I see where the, that's, they're in the problem, you know? Right. Yeah. They, like they're in the is. problem lies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a, you know, what an odd thing to consider is just that, yeah. like, like, I don't know, like that's not, it, it would be very, very difficult for me to just like set my phone aside and not listen to anything Same. here. And yeah. It, it's even happened to me on like rides home from work. Like sometimes I'm driving like 30, 45 minutes home mm. from work and either my phone's dead or my headphones dead and i have to like sit there in the truck with just me and i'm just like my head like goes to all these like not like super crazy places but just places that i don't really want to think yeah. about or like don't want to address or whatever um and uh and so yeah that's kind of that that quote yep. really hits the nail on the head there um he also says, uh, if we spend all our lives in darkness, is it any wonder when darkness starts to live in us? Like, ooh, yeah. If we if we live in like a super dark Fair. Like how, uh, how will we not environment? Pick this up? Yeah. Yeah. It's part of natural progression. Yeah. You know? And it, it kind of goes to like um, you know, like what, what we were taught when we were getting clean and stuff is mm-hmm. like if you're if you're spending all your time around people who are also using and and doing yeah. bad stuff, then is it any no surprise way. when you start doing yeah, bad stuff? Exactly. Like, yeah. Um. Oh. Okay. So this is the one that I'll end on. I I loved I loved this quote so much. I, right, matter of right. fact, I I think I originally wrote it down when I heard it. Um. I forget who exactly is talking to Gabriel, but they say. De Leon, you live. And he says, sadly. And then the other person says, how? And Gabriel says, 
God didn't want me, and the devil was afraid to open the door. <laughs> what a fucking badass oh line, dude. God, dude. Wow. God didn't want me, and the devil was afraid did... to open the door. <laughs> oh, How sick is that? Oh, man. That's I think so I remember great. that. I think that's when he was, uh, you know, there. Uh, oh, man. There was a point in time where there were some rallying people. I don't remember if that's this is at the Sanctum or if this is somewhere else, but we're like, you know, you know they yeah just what it, you said it might like, have I know, I know who you are right why are you 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 were dead how are you alive yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like nope uh, devil didn't want me bitch it could, might have even been uh, handle me is what he fucking said yeah i i wonder if it was uh not danton but the first vampire like when he goes into that yeah. town and people are like oh send yes, him that's out it. that's it that's and he it, like exactly. comes down yeah, I think I think it. that was the time. Yeah. That was such a badass scene too. When yeah. uh, or maybe that's that where, was Danton that showed up to the that's town. That's where but... uh, Diora escapes from. That's when she jumps yeah. out the window. That's right. the town, separate right. from the sanctum. Right, right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What a badass moment! So like cool. I forget, I forget how he kills the girl vampire, but it happened like so fast. Yeah. Like he just did it lightning quick. And everyone was like, holy shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> He's not fucking around. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that's that's pretty much all I got. I am so glad that you enjoyed this book because I wanted I wanted you to enjoy it so bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm so glad that you had a good time with it. Yeah. I'm and... glad this has become a part of our relationship is me denying <laughs> books and then months later reading them and being like oh my god you were right i shouldn't have denied you in the first place <laughs> basically so dude, think about it it's happened a lot oh like, yeah <laughs> dude i was i i gotta yeah. i gotta go through and upload the clip of um when we were doing our live stream and you told me out of nowhere for the first yes. time yeah. you're like you're like, by the way, I finished Will of the Many. And I was like, yeah. fucking what? <laughs> like, oh my God. Yeah. You're like, I, I loved glad, it. I'm like, I'm Whoa. glad I held on to that. I figured that was a good time to hit you with that Dude, one. Dude, you could not have yeah. picked like a better time to reveal yeah. that. That was yeah. so good. Because um, I had no idea you were reading it. Like, no, I, I had you, no I didn't clue. Tell you anything. Yeah. yeah nothing oh. at all. Other than I didn't like it and I DNF'd it. That was the last thing you heard about it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was such a fantastic. That was such fantastic <laughs> timing. I love yeah. that. Um, but yeah, like, you know, it, it kind of happened with uh, Lies of Locke Lamora as oh, well. Oh, totally. Yeah. Same exact thing as this one. I read a couple yeah. hours and I was like, nope, not for me. Yeah. Went back five months later. And then I you was read like all three. Immediately in <laughs> love, just addicted, hooked. Yeah. yeah yeah oh man yeah we got to get back to the gentleman bastards i oh, I, man. Send... I would i would love to reread it you know i was thinking Me about too. this because you you bring it up almost every podcast in some <laughs> way shape, or form, which is well, great i'm glad that you do in some way i always hear about it I'm yeah like, god i need to fucking read that again dude yeah like, i think i think after i think after we read the second book empire of the damned I think I'm gonna go back and start reread the trilogy. Should we yeah. give it a reread? I would be. I think we I would should, love dude. to. Yeah, I really think we should. Let's yeah. do it. I we would should. love that. I would love yeah. that. The whole trilogy, though, and then do like a maybe a video on the trilogy. Be like, yeah, back to this. Let's see what we think. Yeah. So <laughs> as we wrap up here, what uh, <laughs> what are some of your just like parting thoughts? Is there anything specifically you're looking forward to in Empire of the Damned or anything that uh, last minute mentions you want to make for Empire of the Vampire? Yeah, um, I don't know if I have a whole lot other than I really I'm I want to try and like, you know, because we have a week from today before we need to finish i don't even know if that'll happen but i really want to reread this one before i read the second one but i don't think yeah. i'll have enough time you know what you could do yeah is because it sounds like you remember most of the stuff in I between do. yeah like in the middle just the switching yeah it really bugs me or I, well I... I wonder if you could go back and listen to the first couple hours or like then, three or four hours yeah. or whatever. And then and hit then the last skip. like three hours. Yeah. And listen yeah, to the last that's three a hours. Good idea. That's a That'd good probably idea. be a great way to go. Because in the middle, uh, there's stuff that happens that is like important. But I think you get all of the context of everything yeah. 
out totally. at the end. So, yeah. um, no, that's and, and we've that's... talked about most of the stuff in the middle yep. here today. So that's that's probably what I'll do. And so, it's a good yeah, idea. I was I was pleasantly surprised. There's you know not much more than that that I could say that I'm glad that I read it and enjoyed it. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, the second book is you know better. Yeah, and awesome. Yeah, I should say better because this book was great, but I mean like better than great, like just right. outstanding. Yeah, for sure. I, I, it's, I haven't seen any negative reviews. I've only been seeing I don't positive reviews. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I gotta tell you something funny about Empire of the Damned. Okay. I just about had a heart attack because the copy that I have right over there is like you have the, a copy of the second book. No, the first book. Oh, okay. Um. The, the copy I have of Empire of the Vampire is like a special edition. It's signed. I remember you like, talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was thinking, well, I have to get the second book in the special edition, like the special hardcover and signed. Yeah. Yeah. Got you, got you. So the way that you get that is by pre ordering it and through certain websites. And yeah. certain websites, if you pre order, you'll get the signed edition. Yep. And. I just the date flew up at me. Like I thought mm-hmm. it was coming out like at the end of no, March, sudden, like March twenty sixth. Like, Holy shit! Yeah. yeah. And on on Friday, I was like, "Wait, I forgot to order the physical mm. edition." I'm like, "Man, it's gonna be sold out everywhere." And I called Barnes and Noble, and I was like, "Hey, do you guys have your special Barnes and Noble edition? Because that's what that is." And yeah. usually, their their Barnes and Noble edition is signed. And nice. they're like, "Oh yeah, we have twenty six of them." I'm like, "Holy crap!" It was like ten minutes away You're from like, my job. I'll be site. there in ten minutes. Yeah. yeah. So I hauled ass over there and found their like special edition. Yep. No signature. Like oh. it, it was the special edition, yeah, but it it wasn't signed. signed. I'm like, I'm like. Do you guys like? Isn't every Barnes and Noble edition signed? And they're like, no, this one's not signed. Ugh. I'm like, shit. So I go on Google and I type in like, you know, Empire of the Dam special edition yep. signed, and they're all popping up. Like people that had gotten theirs days ago. Yeah. And they're popping up for like three, four hundred dollars. Oh, good. And Lord. I'm like, shit, dude. I'm like, I'm gonna have to save up so much money just to get a matching set. That's crazy. And oh. Wow, I mean, yeah. good for good for him, dude. If, yeah, holy <laughs> for crap. real. Yeah, holy crap. Yeah, that's a lot of money. So I, uh, so I'm like looking around. I'm like, what the heck? And you know, Powell's bookstore in Oregon. I've heard of Powell's. Yeah. yeah. A- actually, I think we went there when we, we went, went there to see together. the Legendarium. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, for some reason, like they they like popped up, and I was like, I wonder like if they have it. I'm just checking yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And I type it in like signed edition. Turns out that they got their books late. So they haven't even gotten them until tomorrow. Uh, and this okay. is on Friday. So they, yeah. they don't get them until Monday. And they still had their pre order window open. And I was like, oh my God, I can oh, order wow. the signed edition. Yeah. Because once it's out, then you can't pre order anything. Yeah, and that's how totally, you get the signed. Totally. Yep. And so they had like three days left on it. And so I pre-ordered that bitch, got nice. it for 35 bucks. Oh, dude, solid, bro. <laughs> yeah. Solid. And then they're, was, will Powell yes. ship it to you or what? Yeah. Yep. Nice. nice. Yeah. That's cool. So I'm like, man, that's that's all. Awesome. I yeah. was able to get it just through like a clerical yeah. mistake. <laughs> Come on now. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so great um but yeah i'm i'm excited for empire of the damned i've like i said i've heard nothing but good things about it um and yeah i mean i'll be i'll be starting it on on monday and i can't yep. wait to can't wait to get into it and and see what happens next because rereading this made me remember like why i loved it in the first place so totally all right, guys. So with that, we are going to wrap up here. Uh, remember that you can reach out to us on Twitter and Discord. That's two of the best places to uh, reach out to us or just in the comments or whatever. Uh, you can also sign up for our Patreon. At three bucks a month, you get exclusive content, which is basically just me and Gabe kind of dicking around and, and whatever. Uh, and then at $6 and above, you get all of our content 
way, way earlier than everybody else. So uh, if that sounds like something that you'd be interested in, then definitely uh, go check that out. And we will be back next week with Empire of the Damned. I'm going to try to get these out as close together as I possibly can, um, but they should follow at least back to back, uh, you know, while everybody is talking about these books and stuff. Um, but yeah, we will see you then for that. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. All that stuff really helps us out. Uh, it's really like just it helps us get seen by the algorithm a lot more so we really appreciate it but we will see you when we do empire of the damned and until next time fuck my face all right <laughs>